Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, we're looking at the Algo Laser Alpha Mark II. Last year, Algo Laser asked if I'd like to try out their Algo Laser Alpha, and I absolutely loved it. And I'll put a link to that video up here. Since then, I've been using it to make all sorts of things. I've made stuff for the railway, I've made gifts for friends, and I've even managed to make a few things and sell them on Etsy. So when Algo Laser told me they were releasing the upgraded Alpha Mark II and asked me if I'd like to try it out, then I definitely wasn't going to say no. And full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. I'm not being paid, but the deal is that I do get to keep the laser. In this video, I'm gonna see how the laser performs with a handful of small projects. But before I do, what is the Algo Laser Alpha Mark II and how is it different from the Mark I? The Alpha Mark II is a 20 watt diode laser engraver and cutter. Algo Laser are promoting it as a no learning laser engraver that's perfect for beginners and all the improvements they've made from the Mark I are aimed at making it easy to use. Focusing is done by simply lifting the lever, placing the spacer on the material, lowering the laser until it touches the spacer before locking the lever off again and removing the spacer. All pretty straightforward. The most obvious upgrade is the addition of this coloured touchscreen, which the Mark I doesn't have. And that really does make it easier to use and get started. It comes with a load of example projects preloaded, and it also has material presets built in, so you can get up and running really, really quickly. As a quick test, I selected the cat keyring, and with a few clicks, off it goes. The screen also lets you monitor progress of your project. Two new features added for the Mark II are interruption recovery, so if the emergency button's pressed or the machine shuts down unexpectedly, then you can recover and resume to make sure the time and material isn't wasted. Just a note though, you need to activate this feature in the settings menu because by default it's turned off for some reason. Also, they've added a one-click repeat function where you can just move the laser head to a new position and press the again button to repeat the last project. This will be a really handy time saver if you quickly need the same thing done a few times. The Alpha will also connect directly to Wi-Fi, which makes it really easy to update firmware via the touchscreen. And if you've got a device on the same Wi-Fi network, then you can also use the Algo Laser app to control the engraver, which again makes things a lot simpler. Obviously, you don't have to use the app. For more complex projects, you can still connect software such as Lightburn. So already I think those are massive improvements for the Mark II, making it a lot more friendly for beginners. But whilst this might be a great machine for first time laser users, that doesn't mean that it's lacking in pro features. The 20 watt diode is powerful, it's got a dual core CPU so it processes information quickly and it can move the laser head very fast. The laser comes as a kit that you construct yourself, it's not difficult and the instructions are pretty easy to follow, it took me around an hour to get everything together. The air pump is included with adjustable flow rate and this stops the lens getting dirty when engraving and makes sure you get nice clean lines when cutting. But enough talking, time for a project and this time I thought I'd start with something very small but also very detailed. I've designed this 00 scale picnic bench in Lightburn and I'm going to cut it out of 0.6mm thick wood coloured card. Cutting this out takes less than two minutes. This is what it looks like straight off the cutter. I've made it so the pieces stay connected to the card with tiny tabs and these need to be cut away. Otherwise, because all the bits are so tiny, the air pump tends to blow them around whilst cutting. As you can see, we've got some really nice clean lines. I also designed this parasol which really tested the resolution of the engraver. It looks okay considering the writing is absolutely tiny, but to be honest, you'd probably be better doing something like this on a normal printer which has better resolution and then just cutting it out. And here it is all glued together with a tiny 3D printed me sat down at the bench. I'm really pleased with this and it just shows how much detail you can get into something even this tiny. Now how about something a bit bigger, like a G-gauge wagon? Again, in Lightburn I've designed this very basic wagon which is going to be produced in three sections. Firstly, the sides are going to be cut out of 4mm thick MDF and we've got the engraved lines to give the planking effect on these parts. Then the frame is going to be made out of 6mm MDF with laser cut holes to take screws for the wheel assemblies. And finally, a floor out of 2.3mm thick plywood again with the planking effect. Getting all three sections set up and cut took me less than an hour and I'm quickly learning ways to make things faster by separating layers and changing the way that the laser head moves to be more efficient. 
Here you can see I've got all the laser cut parts and they simply slot together to make up the main body of the wagon. But before I went any further, I thought it'd be a good idea to give them a quick coat of paint. So I got the gray primer out. And I think you'll agree that looks a lot better. Obviously a wagon needs some wheels. I could have made these from laser cut parts or even 3D printed parts, but I've actually stolen them from a Backman big hauler. And to hold those in place, I've got some 3D printed parts that screw into the frame. And then I've also 3D printed some detailed bits to go on the side and also some buffers and a coupling hook. So there we go, a completed wagon. It's pretty basic, but I think it's a good example of how laser cutting and 3D printing can be used together to create some pretty impressive stuff. This was designed and put together in a few hours and it costs a lot less than a ready to run wagon from the shops. So those are two railway related projects. As well as those, I had a go at making a Little Wicket key ring, which I think looks pretty neat. And I also made this template that I used to hold and engrave some pencils. When I first reviewed the Alpha last year, Algo Laser were a fairly new name in the laser engraving market and they hadn't had a chance to develop any accessories. But now they've got quite a large range, so they also sent me the rollers to try out. And these took some practice to use and I'll be honest, I wrote off a few glasses, but I did eventually get the hang of it and got the settings dialed in and was able to produce this Little Wicket Railway engraved glass. So there we go, that's an overview of the Algo Laser Alpha Mark II and some examples of what you can do with it. Laser cutters definitely have a place in the hobby alongside 3D printers and Algo Laser are helping to make that technology more affordable and accessible for modelers. I've said it in previous videos, but it's important, so I will say it again. Lasers can be dangerous, so safety precautions are essential when using them, and that means eye protection, and because they work by burning material, they can also produce some nasty fumes. So you're either going to need an enclosure with a good filter, or do all your work in a well-ventilated area, which is why I do most of my cutting outside. But like most technology, if used properly, then they're perfectly safe. Plus, Algo Laser have quite a few built-in safety features, such as the emergency stop button, the key lock, and tilt detection. If you'd like full details about the Mark II, then I'll put an affiliate link in the video description below. And they often do deals, and if there's a promotion on at the moment, then I'll also try and link to that down there as well. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Special thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons for your support. Your names are up on screen now. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.